In this video, uh, we will solve the uh, plectic test. Uh, so, there are three problems in the plectic test. So, the first problem, uh, solve the heat equation, ut equals 2uxx for a load of length 2. So, the load, uh, the left hand side, left end point is 0. And the right end point is x equal to 2. And uh, <clears throat> both ends insulated for all time, meaning that uh, we are imposing a zero Newman boundary condition at the end point of the load. That is uxt0 equals maybe, maybe 0t. Sorry. 0t x equal to 0 equal to 0 and the ux x equal to 2 also 0 okay that is the boundary condition and also the initial temperature is given uh, that is phi x equals sine pi x uh, in other words u x 0 that is when t equal to 0 equals sine pi x so this is the uh, bang, uh, initial condition Okay, so we have equation, we have boundary condition and the initial condition. Okay, so first formulate the mathematical problem and then uh, solve the problem uh, in the uh, steps described. Okay, so mathematical formulation uh, is just uh, what we have already written uh, here. Uh, first, the equation, uh, we know that this is a heat equation. And then now, this is the boundary condition at the left end point, x equal to 0. And also, uh, right end point, x equal to 2. Uh, we, are opposed, we are imposing a Newman boundary condition. Therefore, uh, the boundary condition is uh, imposed on the partial derivative of u, which is respect to x. And also, this is the uh, initial condition, when t equal to 0. So the range of t is t greater than 0. And uh, for x, x lies in the interval 0, 2. Okay. So this is the mathematical formulation. Uh, that is the first question for this problem. The second question uh, about product solutions and uh, the corresponding eigenvalue problem. So for this, uh, we need to uh, find solution the so-called product solution. That is a solution of the form uxt equals uh, some function of x uh, times some function of t. Uh, so that is capital X and capital T. Now, uh, how to get the product solution? Uh, we need to uh, find some ODE where x and t satisfied. Uh, to do this, uh, we compute the derivative of such a u uh, appears in the equation. So in our equation, we have ut and uxx. So we should compute the corresponding ut, that is x t prime. And uh, you, for uxx, that's x double prime t. So substituting the ut and the uxx to our equation, uh, we obtain x t prime equals 2x double prime t. Okay, then we divide both sides of the equation x t prime equals to t two uh, x double prime t by two x t we get the left hand side the left hand side is t prime over two t while the right hand side is t prime over x so for this equality the left hand side is a function of t and the, the right hand side is a function of x therefore it has to be a constant that is for some real number lambda. Uh, the common value of the previous equality equals minus lambda. Okay, so from this, we see that the function t satisfies this ODE. t prime plus 2 lambda t equals to 0. And uh, similarly, x double prime plus lambda x also equals to 0. Okay, now we consider the boundary condition. Our boundary condition uh, is imposed on ux. Therefore, we need to compute ux. So, uh, since u equal capital X capital T, ux is just x prime T, right? Now, using the boundary condition, we know that ux 0t is 0. But when x equal to 0, 
u x is just x prime zero t t. Okay, so from this we conclude that x prime zero must be zero. Okay, otherwise capital T is a fun function, constant function identically equal to zero. Then the product solution is the zero trivial solution u identically equal to zero. This is not what we want. So since t capital T could not be identically zero, the x prime t zero has to be zero. Similarly, for the boundary condition at the right end point x equal to two, uh, we have this equality, and uh, this is x prime two t t. Uh, as before, uh, x prime two has to be zero. So x prime zero and x prime two are all zero uh, under the ODE for x double prime, uh, sorry, and the, the ODE for x uh, consists of the eigenvalue problem for x. That is x double prime plus lambda x equal to zero. And uh, x prime zero and x prime two are all zero. So this is the eigenvalue problem. So uh, question two for this problem uh, complete. Okay. The third question, uh, we need to solve the eigenvalue problem. Uh, to, to solve the eigenvalue problem, uh, that is the problem at the bottom of these slides, uh, we need to distinguish three cases, lambda negative, lambda equals to zero, and lambda is positive. So first we consider the case that lambda is negative. In this case, our ODE for x is what? Our ODE for x is x double prime plus lambda x equals to zero. So when lambda is negative, uh, the general solution of our ODE for x is x equals some constant, say 1, multiplying exponential function of minus uh, square root of minus lambda x, and then uh, exponential of minus square root of minus lambda x. Okay, this is what we know from our study of ordinary differential equation. Then, uh, because our uh, Boundary condition is imposed on u x and u x is x prime t, so we need to compute x prime. Ah, okay, then x prime is say one multiplying the square root of minus lambda e to the uh, square root of minus lambda x. Ah, this is the derivative of the first term in x. Then the second term, the derivative of the second term is also easy to compute. So that is x prime. Now our boundary condition is what? x prime zero equal to zero. x prime two is also zero. That is the boundary condition for our eigenvalue problem. So um, we substituting x by zero in the expression of x prime. We, we get uh, since the exponential of zero is one. So x prime zero is easily uh, to see that equals to say one square root of minus lambda subtract say two square root of minus lambda. Then uh, the other boundary value problem, uh, uh, boundary value condition, that's x prime two equal to zero. From this, we let x equal to two in the expression of capital X prime. We get this. So these two equality can be considered as a system of linear um, equation. Uh, so from linear algebra, uh, we can easily solve this for C1 and C2. And then we see that C1 and C2 are all zero. So since C1 and C2 are all zero, and our x is C1 exponential something plus C2 exponential minus something. Okay, so uh, it is follows that x is identically zero. So this means that when lambda is negative, the only solution of our eigenvalue problem is the zero function x identically equals to zero. That means lambda is not an eigenvalue. Okay, so the case lambda negative is done. Now we consider the case that lambda is zero. When lambda is zero, the general solution of x double prime plus lambda x equal to zero is a linear function of x. In other words, x equals some ax plus b. As before, we need to compute the derivative of x, that is x prime equals to a, then applying the boundary condition for x, uh, our x prime zero and x prime two. So x prime zero and x prime two are all equals to a, because uh, for our this capital X, 
uh, x prime is a constant function. So from this, we see that a is zero, and the b is we have no restriction on b. Therefore, b is free. Uh, this means that when b is not zero, uh, any constant function x identically equal to b satisfies our uh, ODE and also boundary condition. In other words, when uh, lambda, uh, sorry, uh, zero is an eigenvalue denoted by lambda zero, and uh, the corresponding eigenfunction is uh, any constant function. So we choose one of them denoted by capital X zero. Uh, this that is the function identically equals to one. So the case that lambda equals to zero is also solved. Okay. The last case is lambda positive. So when lambda is positive, the general solution is a linear combination of sine and cosine. That is x prime uh, x is given by this expression. Then we also need to compute the x prime. Well, x prime um, the the derivative of the first term cosine because the derivative of cosine is minus sine. Therefore, we get the derivative of the first term and then the derivative of the second term. Okay, this is x prime. Now applying the boundary condition, x prime zero is zero, x prime two is two. We get uh, x prime zero equals to zero. Using the expression for x prime, uh, substituting the x by zero, we see that x prime zero is just uh, the linear combination of sine zero and cosine zero. But sine zero is zero, therefore the first the term disappear we only only the second term survives so we have say two square root of lambda because of cosine zero is one okay so from this we can conclude that say two is zero uh, but uh, uh, we also have another boundary condition x prime two uh, equals to zero as well then uh, but x prime two is say one square root of lambda sine two square root of lambda uh, okay plus C2 cosine 2 square root of lambda okay but C2 is zero so actually since C2 is zero the expression for x prime 2 only has the first term so the first term has to be zero uh, okay <clears throat> so from this because C1 could not be zero we already have C2 equals to zero. If C1 is also zero, then our capital X is the zero function. Okay, so this is not uh, what we want. We, we, we want no zero solution. Therefore, C1 is not zero. So to avoid C1 equals to zero, the sign 2 square root of lambda has to be zero here. Uh, this has to be zero. Okay, so from this we see that uh, square root of lambda is <coughs> sorry square two square root of lambda is an uh, integer multiple of pi so we can actually we have a sequence of eigenvalue now uh, every such for n equal to one two three and so on such lambda n uh, can ensure that sine two square root of lambda equals to zero so all these lambda n are eigenvalue of our eigenvalue problem the corresponding eigenfunction can be taken, uh, can be this xn. Ah, okay. Why this xn? Because we know that C2 is zero. Let's go back to the top of this page. Our x, the solution, x is the linear combination of C1 and C2. But C2 is already zero. So in fact, x is cosine square root of lambda x. But the square root of lambda is n pi over 2. So uh, this gives us the result at the bottom of this page xn equals to cosine n pi x over 2 so this will solve the complete solution of the uh, eigenvalue problem so the last question in the problem uh, solving the initial boundary condition so we we are looking for product solution and we, we already uh, find the x actually we have a sequence of lambda n correspondingly we have a sequence of x denoted by xn but we still have not, know nothing about t but uh, t satisfies the ODE for t uh, here 
this is the ODE that T satisfied. Okay, so since lambda equals lambda n, we know. So uh, solving this ODE for T, we can obtain the, the T. Then, oh no. Then T is an uh, exponential function, you see? T prime plus 2 lambda nt equals to 0. So T is exponential function, exponential minus 2 lambda nt. Lambda n is n pi over 2 square. So uh, after some uh, simplification, uh, our T is eventually is exponential of uh, half of n pi square T minus, okay? Then, uh, a product solution satisfying the boundary condition is this un, the production of x n and t n. And uh, this is just exponential cosine n pi x over 2. So we, we, we have find the un. But this un, by the principle of superposition, uh, no, sorry, uh, this un satisfies the PDE, the, the heat equation, also satisfies the boundary condition, uh, that is uh, ux. Uh, the boundary condition is here, right? Uh, this is the boundary condition. So every such un satisfies uh, this boundary condition and also satisfies the heat equation. Uh, but uh, uh, we don't know whether it satisfies the initial pro, uh, condition. So to construct a solution satisfies the initial condition, the idea is that uh, uh, at every all this un, uh, using this un construct this uh, series which coefficient c n, uh, that is de defined a function u by this series, uh, and uh, uh, by the form of un, this series, uh, the precise form of this series is uh, at the is the right hand side of this equality. So if we can choose suitable c n such that this is u de defined in this way satisfies the initial condition then this u is the solution of our initial boundary problem so uh, our initial condition is that ux0 equals sine pi x so from the expression of uxt above let t equal to 0 uh, we see that on one hand ux0 equals sine pi x on the other hand, ux0 is the sum of say n cosine n pi x over 2. So, uh, from our uh, study of Fourier series, we know that we really can choose some say n such that uh, this equality is true. Actually, say n is just the Fourier cosine uh, coefficient of sine pi x. Uh, okay, you, you see? zero two our sine pi x is a function defined on maybe ah this is sine pi x this function defined on zero two the interval then this function can be uh, expanded by uh, the a serial consisting of a cosine ah that is the Fourier cosine series for this sine function uh, and the coefficient say n uh, from our textbook, uh, the, the the section about Fourier cosine, Fourier sine series, uh, you can uh, get this uh, integral. Say n equals the integral from zero to two. Uh, okay, and, and uh, I have not, I do not compute uh, this integral because this belongs to calculus one. Uh, I, I I want to focus on how to solve PDE. Okay, now the problem of solving PDE has been converted to compute the coefficient say n uh, that is calculus one okay uh, com computing after you compute the say n which this coefficient the u given here ah uh, the u given here is our solution so this is the solution of our problem one of course uh, in the test you need to uh, compute the say n explicitly okay but i skip that uh, calculus one part Okay, from this video. Now let's go to uh, problem two. 
Problem two is about wave equation. Uh, the equation is wave equation. UTT equals nine UXX. Uh, the wave equation. Uh, and uh, this equation describes a stream of length pi. So our interval zero pi. The left m point is zero. The right m point is x equal to pi. And uh, uh, the boundary condition is uh, both ends held free. Uh, free boundary means that uh, zero Newman boundary condition. Uh, okay, so zero Newman boundary condition. Now also we need to we need some initial condition. For the initial condition for for heat for wave equation we need a two initial condition the initial position or the initial displacement and the, the initial velocity. Well, um, the initial position is sine x and the initial velocity is zero. So initially at the moment t equal to zero, the stream is u x t equal to zero equals sine x. This is the initial position ah. given by sine x. And the initial velocity, that is the derivative of the displacement with respect to the time t. So this is the initial velocity. Ah, it is zero. So uh, our wave equation are imposed with this two uh, initial condition. Okay. And also boundary condition also no. Boundary condition is uh, free. Boundary condition free means that ux zero t. What's this? Uh, this is the boundary condition at x equal to zero. Our u is a function of x and t. Okay. So uh, uh, zero Newman boundary condition. So this is zero and. Uh, at the right end point, x equals to pi. This is also zero uh, because of the assumption uh, zero boundary, uh, zero Newman boundary condition. Okay, so uh, all these uh, are what we can learn from the description of the problem. So firstly, we need to formulate the mathematical problem, and then we need to solve the problem uh, as the uh, steps. Okay, now. Uh, for mathematical formulation, uh, you just uh, write down your initial boundary uh, value problem. So first goes the equation, that is the wave equation, and then uh, this is a uh, boundary condition at the right uh, at the left end point x equals to zero. Uh, zero Newman boundary condition. Therefore, the partial derivative which respect to the space variable x is zero, and also at the uh, right end point and uh, when x equal to pi uh, this is also zero then for initial condition uh, this is the initial position or initial displacement uh, that is sine x and uh, now this is the initial velocity uh, ut when x when t equal to zero this equals to zero so this is the mathematical formulation uh, so this are uh, complete the Question one for problem two. Now, next we should uh, try to find the product solution and the, uh, the corresponding eigenvalue problem. As before, uh, to find the product solution, assume that the solution u is of this form, uh, a function of x times a function of t. Then uh, we need to compute the partial derivative of this u appears in the equation. So we need to compute the UTT. Ah, UTT is x t double ply. Okay? And the UXX is x double ply t. So substituting into the equation, we get x t double ply equals 9 x double ply t. Okay? So I, I, I need to uh, <coughs> remind you that x t double ply equals 9 x double ply t. Uh, is an abbreviation. The complete uh, writing should be x x t double plane t equals nine x double plane x t t. 
Therefore, uh, dividing the both sides by 9xt, we have t double prime t t t equals x double prime x x x ah. But uh, we uh, in the slides uh, I uh, omit the variables t and uh, x because the function capital T and the capital X remind us that uh, they are function of small t and small x respectively. Okay, so this is, so we even if we omit uh, the variables, uh, there will be no confusion. Okay, so this equality, or if you are uncomfortable for omitting the uh, variables, you can look at the right of this screen. Ah, uh, okay, so. The left hand side of this equality is a function of t. The right hand side is a function of x. Uh, therefore, um, as before, this has to be a constant. So for some real number, lambda, uh, the above equality equals minus lambda. Then uh, we conclude that capital T satisfies this uh, ODE and the capital X satisfies this ODE. Okay. Now we need to find the uh, boundary condition for for uh, for x. Huh? Now our boundary condition is imposed on u x, so we need to compute u x. So u x is x plus x t t. Then u x when x equal to zero, it is zero. So this equal to zero means that x plus zero mod times t t equals to zero. As before, uh, this force x prime zero to be zero. Otherwise, t t is identically zero, and uh, we are m at uh, u identically equal to zero. The trivial solution we don't want, so x prime zero is zero. Similarly, consider the right end points. So this is zero according to our boundary condition, and uh, this force x prime pi to be zero as well. So. Uh, the ODE for x under these two uh, condition on x prime at zero and pi consists of the eigenvalue problem for x ah, equation and the boundary condition. So this ends the uh, question two for the problem. Question three. In question three, we need to solve this eigenvalue problem as before. Uh, we need to distinguish three cases, lambda negative, lambda equals to zero, and the lambda positive, okay? So first, consider the case that lambda is negative. So when lambda is negative, the general solution of this uh, ODE for x is given by linear combination of exponential functions, okay? Then, uh, since our boundary condition involving ux, sorry, in our boundary, our, our eigenvalue problem, our eigenvalue problem uh, involving the x prime at zero and pi. So we need to compute x prime. So our x is this linear combination of uh, exponential function. Uh, our you can compute x prime. So this is the derivative of the first term. Uh, then the derivative of the second term. So we have the expression for x prime. Now applying the boundary condition, zero equals x prime zero. So uh, so you, in the expression for x prime, let x be zero, then you see the x prime zero equals c1 square root subtract c2 square root, so that is x prime zero, and also x prime pi is also zero, then let x equal to pi in the expression for x prime, we get this equality. Again, this can be considered as a sequence of two equations of uh, linear equation, uh, a sequence of two linear equation. Uh, we have two unknowns, c1 and c2. Then uh, in linear algebra, we can see that c1 and c2 are all zero. Then x is identically zero, meaning that such lambda is not an eigenvalue. Because for every negative lambda, our argument here shows that x has to be identically zero. So when lambda is negative, the eigenvalue problem has no non-zero solution. Therefore, such lambda, negative lambda, is not eigenvalue. Okay. Next, we consider the case lambda equals to zero. So in this case, the general solution is ax plus b. 
啊。So x prime is the constant a. Then from the boundary condition x prime zero equals x pi zero equals two zero, we see that a is zero. And we do not have any restriction on b. B is free. So uh, for every no zero b, x equals b is a no zero solution for our eigenvalue problem when lambda equals to zero. This means that when lambda equals to zero, uh, we have a no zero solution. That is a constant function. Okay. So zero is an eigenvalue. We denote it by lambda zero, and uh, we can take one of the Constant function say uh, one denoted by x zero x uh, as our eigen function. So the case lambda equals to zero has already been solved. Okay. Last we consider the case that lambda is uh, positive. When lambda is positive, uh, the general solution is linear combination of a cosine and a sine. Okay. Then. Uh, as before, we need to compute the derivative of x, compute x prime. So x prime equals, uh, this is the derivative of the first term in x, okay? Uh, now, the derivative of the second term. So this is x prime. Well, uh, applying the boundary condition, x prime zero is zero, but uh, x prime zero is linear combination of sine zero and cosine zero. Sine zero is zero, so we have a C2 square root of lambda because cosine zero is one. And then the x equal to pi in the expression of x prime, we see that uh, we have this equality. In this equality, we know that from the first equality, uh, C2 is already zero. Therefore, uh, the x, x prime pi is equal to the first term on the right hand side of the last equality. So this give us this equality. So we want to avoid C1 to be zero because if C1 is zero, then the corresponding X is identically zero. We want to find no zero solution. So uh, if C1 is not zero from this equality, the square root of lambda, uh, sorry, the sine pi square root of lambda has to be zero. Therefore, the square root of lambda has to be an uh, uh, integer. Uh, so lambda is uh, n square n from one two and so on. So we have a sequence of eigenvalue lambda n denoted by lambda n that is n square. The co corresponding eigenfunction is cosine. Why it is cosine here? Why this is cosine? Because our x, our x, our x here. Our x here is a linear combination c1 cosine plus c2 sine, but c2 is zero. So x is a multiple of a cosine. This is why, this is the reason that, uh, why we have x n equals to cosine n x, uh, the, the eigenfunction, okay? Uh, so we see that uh, all these steps are very similar to the previous problem when we solve the heat equation. Uh, but uh, next, when we uh, want to find, when we try to find the solution of the initial boundary condition for the wave equation, uh, then we have some different. So now we solve the initial boundary condition for the wave equation. So uh, as before, we already know that we, we want to find the product solution u x t equal x x t t. I will already solve, uh, we already find x, okay? But we still have nothing, know nothing about t, okay? So we need to find the t. So for the eigenvalue lambda n equals n square, the corresponding t, t satisfies this equation. t satisfies this, okay? t satisfies the equation two, the ODD, ODE two here, uh, when lambda is n square, our eigenvalue. Therefore, uh, the, 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 the general solution of t is also, because lambda is n square is positive. So from this ODE, let me copy the ODE on the board. t double prime plus nine lambda 
t equals to zero. Okay. From this ODE, uh, lambda is n squared. So the coefficient before in front of t is positive. This is positive, nine n squared. So uh, the ODE becomes the ODE is t double prime plus nine n squared t equals to zero. So the general solution of this ODE is what is linear combination of cosine three. Sorry, not nine n squared. It's three nine three n squared. Mm. Uh, it's linear combination of uh, cosine three n t and uh, sine three n t. The coefficient uh, denoted by a n and b n. But uh, this uh, is true for n from one to two three and so on and positive. But we remember that n equal to zero is also an uh, eigenvalue, the corresponding uh, eigenfunction for x is x0 equals to 1. How about the corresponding t? Then, when the, the OD is t double prime plus 9 lambda t equals to 0. So when lambda equals to lambda 0 equals to 0, then uh, the OD becomes t double prime equals to 0. Therefore, t is a linear combination. That is t0. So when n equal to zero, the corresponding t is a t plus b, linear function of t. But when t, uh, when n is one, two, three, and so on, the corresponding t n is a linear combination of a cosine and a sine. Okay. So, uh, the product solution of the heat wave equation satisfying the boundary condition is just u n equals t n x n. So when n is zero, t zero is a t plus b, but x x zero is one. x zero x is identically one. So so this tell us that u zero is just t zero. That is a t plus b. But uh, u n is the t n x n. T n is linear combination of cosine three n t plus uh, and the sine three n t. X n is cosine n x. So this is our u n. Okay, this is u n. So we need to compute. Uh, yes, we 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 need to find uh, we need to find the a n b n, and also small a small b. These are unknown. Uh, so that the, the corresponding series construct from u n. Ah, uh, that is. When n is zero, that is u zero. U zero is a t plus b. Then n from one to infinity. Then the the u n uh, is linear combination of cosine three n t sine three n t uh, multiplying cosine n x. So this is the serious solution. Uh, we need to choose suitable capital A n capital B n and the small a small b so that u given by this serious satisfies the initial condition. If you can find a b, small a, small b, and the capital A and capital B n, so that this u satisfies the initial condition, then this u is the solution of our initial boundary condition. Okay. Now, the boundary condition is sine x equals uh, ux0, right? That is the uh, initial position of the stream. So let t equal to zero in the expression of ut here, uh, of u here, we see that ux zero equals b plus, uh, because sine zero is zero, so when you let t equal to zero, uh, the term, this term, uh, the, blue, the green term is disappear when t equal to zero, because sine zero is zero. Therefore, we only have a n. a n cosine three n t when t equal to zero, cosine is one. So we just have a n cosine n x. So this is the uh, what we get by applying the initial position of the stream. Now for the initial velocity, that is the derivative of u which is back to t. This is zero. But what's this? What's the initial velocity? So u is given. Uh, u is given here. Let me box it. U is given here, right? Maybe the other color. Oh. Yes. Oh. 
So u is given here. So u t, what's u t? Let's compute the u t. Uh, u t. So a t plus b derivative, which is respect to t, give us a. Then the series. A n cosine three n t plus B n sine three n t cosine n x. This series taking derivative which is back to t. Okay. Well, copy the a. Uh, we assume that we can interchange the order of summation and the uh, Elevation. Uh, here we we take the we we, we summing every term up to the, to, and then taking derivative to the sum. But now we taking derivative of every term and then sum up. Therefore, we switch the order. A n cosine three n t plus b n sine three n t cosine n x. Taking derivative. Oh no. Taking derivative, which leads back to O. Oh, which leads back to T. So, for the for the terms in the summation, there are two parts. The the linear combination of a cosine and a sine part depends on T. On the other hand. The cosine on x at the end does not depend on t. So, uh, this equals a plus n equal to 1. a n cosine 3 n t plus b n sine 3 n t. Taking the derivative with respect to t and then times cosine n x. Okay? Now, you focus on the derivative. What's this? This is minus three n a n cosine three n uh, sorry cosine derivative is sine three n t plus three n b n cosine three n t. Okay, the derivative of this, the derivative of this, which is respect to t, is the last letter. Line here, okay. So from this, when t equal to zero, when t equal to zero, what you get? When t equal to zero, the sine three n t term is zero. When t equal to zero, but the cosine three n t is one. So the result is that the result, uh, the result is, uh. A plus sum, uh, three n b n cosine uh n x. Uh, sorry, I have a misprint. Here, here should be three, not two. Here is three. Okay, the two here, uh, in our in my slides, the last line is not two, is three. Okay, so. <clears throat> So to uh, I mean to apply the, the bundle the initial uh, sorry to apply the boundary condition for the initial velocity, you need to compute the partial derivative of the u given here. You need to compute the partial derivative of the u given here, which is partial derivative with respect to t of the u given here. But uh, when you taking derivative derivative, you can assume that you can. Uh, switch the order of the elevation and the summation, uh, as I, as I did uh, on the uh, on the board. Okay. So this is the initial condition. Now, I go to the I, I copy the result we get at the last two lines of this slide to the next page. Okay, next page. So this is sine x equals to this series and the cosine and the zero equals to this. Okay. But now, uh, this means what? This means, you see our sine x is a function. 
sin x is a function defined on 0 and pi. This function uh, equals to some uh, a series consisting of cosine and x. So uh, we see that the right hand side of the first equality uh, here for sin x is the right hand side is just the Fourier co cosine coefficient Fourier cosine series for sine x. So the b and the an are the Fourier uh, cosine coefficients of sine x. Your 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 sine x, your sine x equals half of a zero plus sigma an cosine n x n from one to zero. That is the Fourier cosine series. But now you see that comparing the coefficient, you, you know that b and a n are correspondingly half of b zero is b, and the, the, the small a n here is our a n. And similarly, for the second equality here, zero equals a plus this also means that the right hand side is a Fourier cosine series of the function. That is the constant constant function identically equal to zero. Okay. So uh, that is my my statement here. Two b and a n, and a uh, sorry, it should be two a ah uh, two n three n ah uh, three n b n ah uh, the, the 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 two is wrong. It should be three. Are the fully cosine coefficient of the two functions sine x and zero respectively. So by the formula to compute the fully cosine series. Because b is half of a zero, and a zero is two over pi, the integral of the function sine x on the interval zero pi. So this gives us that b is two over pi. And for a n, a n by the formula to computing the uh, Fourier cosine series, we can we, we we know how to compute the corresponding uh, coefficients. Uh, that is this integral. Of course, I have not com complete the computation of this a n. And as for the G, for the A and the B N, uh, because of the left hand side here, because of the function to be expanded by Fourier cosine series is zero. So without computation, we know that all the coefficients are zero. Therefore, we know that small a is zero and the B N is zero. Uh, only the A N, I, I have not com uh, completed the computation of A N. Okay. So this completed the uh, problem two. Ah, so this is the solution we get because small a is, uh, is zero and the capital B n is also zero. Therefore, finally the solution is this: where the a n is the integral, you need to compute here. A n is this integral. Okay, this is the the a n. Ah, th this integral give us a n. Of course, uh, computing this integral is not very difficult, but uh, time-consuming. Uh, in the test uh, on Thursday, uh, at least you should be able to write down the inter integral expression for an. If you can compute the integral to get the precise value of an, that would be better.